Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm going to discuss the mechanism of ion absorption and transport. See, understanding of one of the most commonest nutritional deficiencies in the world, which is nothing but iron deficiency anemia, it remains incomplete without we understanding the mechanism of ion absorption and transport. Okay, that's why I have decided to do this topic on mechanism of ion absorption and transportation in a very simpler form. So, by the end of this class or this session, we shall be learning the site of ion absorption, the form in which the ion is absorbed, the types of absorbable ion in the diet, the factors which affect ion absorption, as well as the mechanism of ion absorption. So, let's first see the site of ion absorption. Majoritily, Iron is absorbed from duodenum. Let's see the form in which the iron is absorbed. Iron is usually absorbed in Fe2 plus form, which is nothing but a ferrous form. Let's understand that there are two types of absorbable iron in the diet. One is what is called as heme iron, another one is what is called as the non heme iron. The heme ion is derived directly from the animal sources and it is easily absorbed whereas the non-heme ion is coming from the plant sources as well as from the fortified products but it is not that easily absorbed as the heme ion. Next let's understand the factors which affect the ion absorption. There could be factors which increase the ion absorption as well as decrease the ion absorption. So why do you think we should understand the factors which affect iron absorption? Because whenever we prescribe iron medications or diet rich in iron, we should know which are those factors which increase the iron absorption and decrease the iron absorption. So let's see the factors which are going to increase the iron absorption. First and foremost is gastric acidity. That is presence of gastric HCl in the stomach is extremely important for iron to be absorbed. So any condition which can decrease the amount of gastric acidity or gastric HCl in the stomach is going to hinder the iron absorption. Second factor is vitamin C. That's why usually iron is always prescribed with vitamin C. Third is the animal proteins like meat and fish. The fourth is high demand status. Whenever the body is demanding more amount of iron as happens during pregnancy, it can also happen during lactation. It can also happen when during whenever the body is in a growing phase. Last but not the least, depleted stores of iron. When already in the body, the stores of iron are depleted, the body tries to compensate this by increasing the absorption of iron in the body. Next, let's see the factors which are going to decrease the iron absorption. The first and foremost again here is hypochlorhydria, which means a reduction in gastric HCl levels in the stomach. So, can you tell me a few causes of hypochlorhydria? So, one of the most commonest cause of hypochlorhydria is chronic use of antacid drugs. Okay. Whenever a person is having hyperacidity, there are over the counter available drugs in the form of ranitidine. Okay. Even one more drug is our omeprazole. Fine. So, these are the group of drugs which are going to decrease the secretion of HCl in the stomach and they may affect the iron absorption. Now, hypochlorhydria can be also caused because of one disease which is called as atrophic gastritis. So, what is this atrophic gastritis? Atrophic gastritis is nothing but an autoimmune disorder wherein the autoantibodies are going to destroy the parietal cells which help in the secretion of HCl. So, these two conditions can affect the iron absorption. Next factor which can decrease the iron absorption is calcium. So, that is why whenever we are prescribing iron tablets, never prescribe iron tablets along with calcium. If at all the person is already taking calcium, always instruct them to take iron and calcium in a gap of about 1 to 2 hours. Third factor is malabsorption. Any disorder which is going to cause, which is going to affect the duodenal mucosa, any malabsorptive syndrome, it could be tropical sprue, it could be celiac sprue, it could be even duodenal ulcer or it could be even duodenal cancer. All these things are going to affect the duodenal mucosa, hence they are going to reduce the ion absorption. Next is, well, never 
ask the person to take iron tablets along with coffee and tea if at all the person is addicted to coffee and tea again keep a gap of one to two hours because coffee and tea contain something called as polyphenols which are again going to cause reduction in the iron absorption from the duodenum and last but not the least anything which contains phytates and oxalates is also going to decrease the iron absorption so these were the factors which affect the iron absorption Next, let's understand the mechanism of ion absorption. So, the cell what we are seeing here in the diagram, this cell, this is nothing but an enterocyte which is lining the duodenal mucosa. So, this portion of the enterocyte is the apical portion of the enterocyte and this portion is what is called as the basolateral portion of the enterocyte okay and this is the lumen of the duodenum and here we have two types of ion one is the heme ion in the diet and another one is the non heme ion okay so what i told you initially is that heme ion is easily absorbed via a heme transporter which is present in the apical membrane of the enterocyte but that is not the case with the non heme ion why because usually the non heme ion is in the fe2 plus form sorry it is in the fe3 plus form now this fe3 plus form has to get converted into fe2 plus form so the fe3 plus form is converted into fe2 plus form by duodenal cytochrome b which is present on the brush border of the enterocyte so now once fe3 plus is converted into fe2 plus what is fe2 plus fe2 plus is nothing but the ferrous form the fe2 plus enters into the enterocyte via a protein which is present on the apical membrane this is that protein and what is the name of this protein this protein is called as dmt1 what's the full form of dmt1 divalent metal cation transporter 1 so once inside the enterocyte ion can either be stored here in the form of mucosal ferritin we all know the storage form of ion is ferritin or ion can be also transported across the basolateral membrane via ferroportin 1 okay so once ion is effluxed out of the enterocyte it is in which form now it is in fe2 plus form now this fe2 plus form is ion fe2 plus form of ion is converted back to fe3 plus form by hep hestine which is situated in the basolateral membrane of the enterocyte so now this fe3 plus form is the one which is transported in the blood bound to a transport protein which is called as plasma transferrin and now this ion is going to enter into the erythroid marrow where it is utilized for the synthesis of hemoglobin and RBCs. Now this efflux of ion from the duodenal enterocyte is regulated by one very important compound which is called as hepcidin. And this hepcidin is the one which is produced from the liver. Now how this regulation is going to take place is whenever the levels of hepcidine in the body is going to increase this is going to cause down regulation of ferroportin or degradation of the ferroportin from the basolateral membrane of the enterocyte and remember ferroportin 1 is the only efflux route of iron from the enterocyte so ferroportin 1 is down regulated or degraded what is going to happen iron is going to get trapped inside the enterocyte and all of the iron is going to get converted into its storage form which is the ferritin form so what is going to happen now the fe2 plus will be unable to come out of the enterocyte and and then get converted into fe3 plus and then get circulated in the blood and then go to the erythroid marrow for the synthesis of hemoglobin that means fe2 plus will be unavailable or iron will be unavailable for the synthesis okay now what is it which is causing an increased levels of hepcidine anything which is going to cause chronic inflammation is going to cause an increased levels of hepcidine like there are so many chronic inflammatory diseases 
like rheumatoid arthritis we have we have inflammatory bowel diseases we can also have chronic infections we can also have disorders like multiple myeloma okay all these are few examples of the chronic inflammatory disorders which are going to cause an increase in the levels of hepcidine so whenever there is an increase in the level of hepcidine ferroportin 1 is down regulated or degraded and iron is trapped inside the duodenal mucosa and it is not available for the synthesis of hemoglobin and this causes an anemia which we call as anemia of chronic diseases so i hope you have understood the pathophysiology of anemia of chronic diseases if you remember when we discuss the classification of anemia the morphological classification of anemia in that there is a type of anemia which is called as microcytic hypochromic anemia the first and foremost reason for microcytic hypochromic anemia is iron deficiency anemia second one is thalassemia and the third one is anemia of chronic disease so why it is microcytic hypochromic anemia because even though iron is present inside the duodenal mucosa in the form of mucosal ferritin but this iron is unavailable for the production of the hemoglobin because it is trapped inside the enterocyte and it it gets converted into mucosal ferritin and this iron will be lost by shedding of the epithelial cells so this is the mechanism of iron absorption hope so this topic was helpful for you if this was really helpful for you then please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching